Welcome back to the Lynx 3.0 tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this tutorial, we'll create our first LabVIEW applications and deploy them to a BeagleBone Black or a Raspberry Pi. We'll get started by launching an example from the LabVIEW Example Finder. So from the Getting Started window, I'll click Help and choose Find Examples. Then I'll click the Search tab and search for Lynx. This brings up 47 Lynx examples, so this is a great place to start or learn new things when you're getting started with Lynx. From here, I'll select Lynx Blink Advanced and double click it to open it. Once it's open, we can close Example Finder. This is a standard Lynx example that's currently configured to control a remote device over a serial port, but we're going to modify this to run on a BeagleBone Black or Raspberry Pi. We don't want to modify the example that's stored in Example Finder, so we'll save a copy. File, Save As, make sure Copy is selected, and then select Open Additional Copy and click Continue. I'll save it to my desktop, and I'll call it Blink. Now you can see I have two copies open, and I'll close the old one from Example Finder. In order to run this VI on BeagleBone Black or Raspberry Pi, we need to connect to one of those devices, and we do that with the LabVIEW project. To create a project, I'll click File and choose New. Then, in the New dialog, I'll choose Empty Project and click OK. It'll ask if I want to add the currently open VIs to the project, and I do, so I'll click Add. Now you can see I have a LabVIEW project with my Blink VI. Next, let's add a BeagleBone Black or Raspberry Pi to our project. I'll right-click on the pro top project item and choose New, Targets and Devices. We have two options for adding a target to our project. By default, Existing Target or Device is selected. If I click the Links folder to expand it, LabVIEW will search my network for any Links targets, like BeagleBone Blacks and Raspberry Pis, and it'll show me anything it finds. So it found one BeagleBone. I'll select it and click OK to add it to my LabVIEW project. You can see, by default, the IP address is set to the correct IP address for that target. I also have a Raspberry Pi on my network, but it's in a hidden section of my Wi-Fi, so let's add it manually. I'll right-click again on the project item and say New, Targets and Devices. This time I'll click New Target or Device, and expand the Links folder, and select Raspberry Pi, and click OK. Now you can see I have a Raspberry Pi in my project, but the IP address is 0.0.0.0. .0 it's not configured. I'll right-click on the Raspberry Pi, choose Properties, and enter the IP address. We can test and make sure that these devices are set up correctly by right-clicking on them and choosing Connect. When LabVIEW connects to the device, it'll change the dark green dot to a light green dot to indicate that it's connected. Now let's update our VI to run on the BeagleBone Black or Raspberry Pi and use the local I.O. I'll bring up the block diagram by pressing Control e and all I need to change is the Lynx Open VI from Serial to Local I.O. I'll delete the COM port control and remove any broken wires. Then I'll save the VI and close the block diagram. Before I move it to a different context, from my computer to the BeagleBone for example, I need to close the VI. I'll close it, then click and drag Blink.vi under the BeagleBone. Now I'll double click to open it, and we can confirm that it's in the BeagleBone context by looking in the bottom left corner. You can see it's part of Untitled Project 3, which is the project we're in, slash BeagleBone. So this VI will run on the BeagleBone. The last thing we need to do before running the VI is to set the digital output channel to the pin connected to our LED. In order to see the pinout of the BeagleBone Black, we'll choose Help, Maker Hub, Links, and Pinout BeagleBone Black. This will take us to a LabVIEW Maker Hub web page where we can see the pins available on the BeagleBone Black and their functions. If we scroll down, we can see that we have an LED connected between DIO7 and Ground. So in Links, we'll enter 7. 
can also see the other pins here, like PWM on pins 13, 19, 62, and 60. I squared C, which is channel two, SPI, which is channel zero, and a couple of UARTs on channel four, channel one, and finally some analog inputs, zero through six. Now that I know which pin I need to connect to, I can close this web page, and I'll enter in pin seven. If you're using Raspberry Pi, you can do the same thing. Help, Maker Hub, Links, and Raspberry Pi. Again, we can see we have a bunch of DIO channels, an SPI channel, that's channel zero, an I squared C channel, it's channel one, and a UART channel, channel zero. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have any analog inputs or PWM. Let's run the VI. This will build and deploy the VI to the BeagleBone Black and run it, but send updates to our front panel so we can still see what's happening. In this case, we have a while loop that runs four times per second and toggles the value of the LED. So you can see it updated on the front panel as well as on the actual LED connected to the BeagleBone. I'll stop this and move it under the Raspberry Pi context just to show how it'll work there. We don't need to make any changes other than setting the output channel to seven so that it blinks the LED on the Raspberry Pi. I'll press Control R to run the VI, and you can see it builds and deploys, and this time we'll run on the Raspberry Pi. I'll stop the VI, but make sure to save the VI and this project, because we'll use it in the next section, where we'll build and deploy this so that it automatically runs on the target whenever we power it up, even without a connection back to LabVIEW. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.